Hi Stampin' Friends, it's Chris Slogar from BuckeyeInklings.com and today I want to show you how to make this cute little favor. It's a stand-up purse. I'm calling it the Pretty Pillow Box Purse because it's made from a die set in our mini catalog. Uh, maybe you've noticed this. It's a standalone die set with the gingerbread and peppermint suite on pages eight and nine. Doesn't have a stamp set with it. It's great with any papers. Um, I have started making it with this suite as well. Super cute, I'll show you at the end. But anyway, um, it creates a pillow box. The, the die shape is here. And there are some labels and these cute flowers and some details. Um, for the flap if you like, but it creates a pillow box with this great curved edge. Okay, and this is how it's made, how it's intended to be made, like with a curved side that goes down to um, a fold. And I've just flattened out the bottom fold, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, it's super cute this way too, just wanna say. And I don't think I showed you, what I have inside is three Hershey Nuggets. Um, they are just standing kind of staggered. The, the flat side on two of them is towards the back of the purse and the flat side on the middle one is to the front because it's a tight little fit for them. But it's, um, it's going to be easy and an inexpensive treat to fill and really cute. And oh, I also found that chapstick's drop down in there nicely. So, all right, let me show you how to make that shape and then you can go crazy with the, um, the choices for paper and stamps and themes and fillings. All right, so I've already cut. This one um, is made in a paper from Harvest Meadow. This is a different paper from that same collection. I've already cut the die shape and you can see there's a score line that would be pressed into the designer paper um, across here. And instead of using that score line, we need score lines a quarter inch away from that on either side. So I'm lining that up. You know, I have this one line blacked in on my scoring tool. I am lining up that score line with that line, which I just happen to have at 10 inches. Doesn't matter where you put it, but you need one somewhere. Uh, you can do this on your um, trimmer as well. But I'm going to count over two lines so that I'll be a quarter inch away and I'll score on that side. And then I'm going a quarter inch away on the other side as well and scoring there to get my flat bottom. Okay, so let me just show you how that goes together. The first thing I'm going to do is along those score lines I just made, and this is probably going to be hard to see in the video. There are also curved score lines associated with the side panels. So I am cutting along the score line I made to that curved score line that, here I should put this this way, is um, you know on, on either side here. And I'm doing that in all four places where we have that intersection, okay? So I'm cutting along that score line up until the, I hit the curved, the curved line that the die makes, the curved score line. Okay, and then these pieces where I've trimmed, these will fold up. And then this will be, here, I'll go ahead and burnish. This will be the flat bottom of the purse favor. Okay, so again, I'm, I'm folding these up. Okay, and there we have the flat bottom. So now just find those score lines and gently press them. Press a fold into the, the score lines on the curve on all four front, back, left, right. And they are, can be hard to find. They're hard to see on the designer paper. Okay, and then I'm going to take my tear and tape and this will be um, the back of the purse. I'm going to put a little length down 
that curved section. And I'm also going to, before I put this together, punch my holes. I've got them in the, um, the top flap of the bag. Now there's a score line here somewhere. Yep, there. Um, I am going to just punch holes close to that score line and on the flap, just barely. And a little um, tip for this, a lot of these patterns are symmetric. So if you do have a symmetric pattern and you cut it so that the die is centered, see I have this line of, of plus shapes kind of down the middle of the purse. You can easily um, figure out like even punch points for these holes, which the ribbon will uh, go into to make a handle. Okay, so we just have to put this together. I'm go going to uh, break down the fibers a little bit on the front to curve that purse front. And I'll go ahead and reveal the adhesive and just stand this up and we're essentially done except for decorating. I think this will be really cute with those little Halloween prints too. Um, but I've started making the Christmas prints, I'll show you. Okay, so I've got the, the sticky tape on these back um, side pieces, the, the side pieces that come in from the back. And I've got my fold up bottom. I'm just kind of folding the flaps that we made in. And then I'm going to stand this up. Let me see if I can fold that flap back so you can see. I'm going to stand this up so that I can get kind of a true, um, vertical purse so that it's not all crooked and then I am going to push the front pieces back around um, I'm going to push until this curve meets the curve of the back um, edge if that makes sense okay so that these come together and create that shape. Okay, and then we can see the Hershey's can fit in there or your chapstick. Okay, and I've got Bumblebee Gingham Ribbon. I've got a length eight inches long. I've already put a knot in one end and I'm going to um, go up through the hole on one side and the knot's gonna lock it into place and down through the hole on the other side. Might have to trim that if it's getting too frayed. Let's see if I can get it. I'd have to poke it in with my, there we go, tweezers. Okay, and then I'm just going to you can pull this in long enough so that you can easily make a knot on this end. I like to use my tweezers for this too. Of course, you can adjust the length of this handle however you like. Okay, and then to close it up, I have um, these Velcro dots that are 5 8 inch and they're adhesive on both sides. So I've got a hook section and a loop section here and I'm going to press them together already the hook side is the you know the scratchy side the loop side is the the soft side and I'm pressing them together and it's adhesive on both sides so I'm going to put the hook section right up in this flap area and then press Carefully press this closed so that it's um, in line where you want it to be. And then open that up. That, that fuzzy side ends up where it will mate with that hook side. All right. And then all I did to decorate this, I thought this was a cute little tag. I've cut it in white for this bag. I've made another bumblebee flower. Um... There's a cute little for you in this Joyful Life set, which I love. Or any little, you can find, I'm sure, a little 
little tag set that has something to from or what have you. But I'm going to do a little for you. And I've already built up a flower of bumblebee. Remember the die set had actually four of these. So you could make um, two large and two small at a time so that you're um, getting a lot of production from one pass on the big shot. Okay, and I have these great little brush metallic elements and they're adhesive, adhesive back dots, I guess. I kind of like these. Oh, I guess I like these with this paper. I'm going to put the larger one here on the purse flap and the smaller one here on the flower. Okay, and then just tie this up around the handle. I've got a little length, maybe five inches of the white baker's twine. And all I do is make a knot here. And trim the ends. Okay, and it's cute because it stands up. I think I like that about it. Um, it would be nice standing like at a place setting. So there's there's those two with the Harvest Meadow. And like I said, I've also been making them with the gingerbread and peppermint six by six paper. It is so cute because there's so many cute little prints. Okay, so you can see them here too. And I'll have a photo of this on my on my website. So if you're interested in this or any Stampin' Up! products, I would so appreciate your help in my online store. Um, there will be a link to the post I'm going to have on my website uh, with these with these projects. And um, I appreciate your likes, shares, comments, anything like that. And also um, your purchases in the online store. Thanks so much.